What does it mean to be off-grid? Off-grid means there is no connection to utility. You make 100% of your power at your house. I've been living off-grid since 2007, so many years of experience living off-grid. Now, I can tell you from my experience, I designed and built my house specifically to be off-grid. So the amount of energy that we use at our house is significantly less than what the average American house uses. For example, I use about 1,500 kilowatt hours per year, and the American average is about 8,000 kilowatt hours per year. So I have many less kilowatt hours that I have to generate at my house to cover what my loads demand. Now, when you're thinking of taking your house that is connected to a utility and taking it off-grid, meaning disconnecting that, that uh, interconnection with the utility, there's a lot to consider. First, how much energy do you use? You know, most houses use a lot of energy. So we can design and build systems that can cover the energy use of any type of house, whether it's small or large, but there's a cost involved there. So if you're using the average American's house worth of energy every year, then there's going to be a considerable expense involved in taking that house off grid. When you're living off grid, you're your own utility. So what that means is when your system breaks, you either have to fix it yourself or you have to wait for your solar installer to come out and fix the system for you. And depending on what kind of solar installer you're working with, they may or may not have people on call that can come out and repair your system, which may, may mean that you may be out of power for some amount of time with no backup. So living off grid is, is really can be a lifestyle choice. It takes a little more active involvement in your energy generation than you do when you are connected to the utility. So when thinking about being off grid, you really have to think about energy efficient appliances and lighting and things like that. So you want to have the lowest amount of energy use that you can because the less energy you use, the less energy you have to generate. So we can have a smaller system. So anyone's capable of going off grid. It's just a matter of how much cost you want to put into that system. When you're living off grid, you're generating all of your own power. So most off grid systems have some renewable source of energy generation, and that's typically a solar array. That solar array can provide a large portion of your energy use, but you're gonna need some type of energy storage to store the energy that's generated during the day so that you can power your loads at night. What typically happens is your solar array generates power during the day. It's gonna power the appliances in your house, but it's also gonna be big enough to recharge the batteries during the day. When the sun goes down at night, obviously the solar panels aren't making power anymore, so you rely on the energy stored in the batteries to power the house. Now, depending on where you live, that PV array might not be able to generate enough power during the day to cover all your loads at night. I live off-grid in Vermont. During the summertime, I make plenty of power to recharge my batteries and power my loads during the day. But in the wintertime, I don't make enough energy from the PV array to cover all my energy use in the house. So I have another generator. In this case, it's a fossil fuel generator. And I try to reduce the use of that as much as possible so I don't have to use a lot of fossil fuel. But without oversizing my PV array dramatically, I still rely on that fossil fuel generator to make up the amount of energy that the PV can't generate during the wintertime. You can also add other types of renewable energy resources like a wind turbine or a hydro generator, but having that resource is really site specific, so not everybody has access to those resources. We can oversize the PV array to cover most of our loads in the wintertime, but it's usually a good idea to have some sort of fossil fuel generator for the times where you get a long snowstorm or a period of cloudy weather where the PV or the solar array can't cover all of our demands. So we're here at my off-grid house in central Vermont, and a lot of people wonder, what's it like living off-grid and 
what are some of the issues that we run into? This PV array here is a 2.1 kilowatt pole mounted PV system. I also have another array that's a little bit smaller mounted on the roof. And it's really interesting to compare those two types of systems when we are living off grid. My roof mounted system, I have a pretty steep roof. It's about 45 degrees. And even with that steep of a pitched roof, a lot of times in winter, especially if we get a little freezing rain and then a snow, the snow will stick to that array, which obviously, when you got a bunch of snow on your PV array, it doesn't produce much power. The top of pole mount here, which I have mounted at about 65 degrees, so it's a little steeper, that sheds snow in pretty much all conditions. The other nice thing about having the top of pole mount, which I can very easily access from the ground, is I can come out and clear the snow off it very easily, where it's much more difficult to clear the snow off my roof. It's almost impossible. So I've been in this system for about 13 years. We've been living off grid. We really haven't had many problems. We've been very lucky in that respect where all the equipment that we have has functioned properly along the way. I do have flooded lead acid batteries, so they do require some regular maintenance. About every couple months, I need to go in and add distilled water to the battery to make sure the electrolyte level inside the battery stays above the lead plates in the battery. And that's most of the maintenance that I do on my system. I do occasionally clean the tops of the lead acid batteries since they vent some chemicals like hydrogen and sulfur, which can corrode the top of the battery. I also check to make sure the terminals on the battery are tight on a regular basis to make sure they haven't loosened up over time. Other than that, the maintenance of the system is relatively low. With this top pole mount, I can manually adjust the tilt angle of the array to get better performance in different times a year. But I find that, you know, I'm really honestly a little lazy. So I produce enough solar in the summertime, even at this steep angle. So I just keep it at the wintertime tilt angle where I get the best production in the winter when I'm at the lowest production time of the year. So I have it set for that optimal winter angle. Other than that, the system really kind of takes care of itself. I do have to keep an eye on our energy use. So we have a monitor right on the main level of our house where I can look at it every time I walk by to see what the state of charge of my batteries is, how much energy is in the batteries, are they running low? Sometimes I'll manually turn on the generator if I need to run a load of laundry or vacuum the house. And we do kind of live around the PV system and the solar array to make sure we're optimizing our energy use. Other than that, it's just like living in any other house. Our lights turn on when you turn the switch on, and most people who come into my house would never know that we live off the grid. There really is not much difference uh, in user experience from a regular uh, grid-tied house.